What's going on, y'all? It is Ross Jackson here with the Canal Street Chronicles, and we are back here on the YouTube channel. We appreciate you very much joining us here for our off-season content. So to get started with the off-season content, one of the things that we're going to be doing is breaking down different spotlights on particular free agents across the open market that the Saints may be interested in and may be a good fit with the team going into 2021. Of course, the Saints have a lot of different decisions to make due to the salary cap, which They'll be fine. We know not to be too worried about it, but there may be some potential players that end up being signed away on larger contracts to get themselves more money right away rather than sticking around with the New Orleans Saints, which could potentially open up some holes for the Saints. Over at Canal Street Chronicles, Matthew Terry broke down three potential targets for the Saints should they lose Marcus Williams. We're going to talk about one of them today. That is Carolina Panthers or former Carolina Panthers free safety Trey Boston. Is he a good fit for the New Orleans Saints. That's what we're discussing today here with the Canal Street Chronicles. So let's start off with the physical profiles here. Both of these safeties are six foot one, but Trey Boston a little bit heavier at 205 pounds with Marcus Williams is around 195 listed on the Saints website. You can also look at Marcus Williams being just a touch slower, but really around the same speed as Trey Boston, a four or five, you can say mid four or five, 40 for both of these players. However, Marcus Williams only 24 with Trey Boston at least sniffing 29. So a little bit different in terms of age. You're aging a little bit once you go to Trey Boston, but what's the play style and do the play styles match up enough for the Saints to be able to look past that? Should they lose Marcus Williams, could Trey Boston be a good enough fit in the defensive scheme? Now, if you take a look at Trey Boston's pro football focus grades, you'll notice that 2020 was a major drop off just around 44, 49.5 was his grade for coverage in 2020, which was a big time drop off from an elite grade in 2019. A big reason why that changed was because of what Carolina asked him to do on the defensive side. He played just about 50% of his snaps in 2020, Trey Boston did in the box, and then the other 50%, just over 450 or so at free safety. Meanwhile, back in 2019, he only played about 88 snaps in the box and over 900 at the free safety position, a little bit more akin to what the Saints ask of Marcus Williams. So when Trey Boston was there and playing that same style that the Saints asked Marcus Williams to play, he really had a much better season in terms of coverage, walked away with three interceptions that year. We also saw him miss a ton of tackles, 16 tackles in 2020. But again, a large part of that was asking him to make plays closer to the line of scrimmage, something that he wouldn't be asked to do as a deep safety in the Saints system. Now, when looking at safeties, one of the big things that we used to always look at for the Saints, particularly with Dennis Allen as a defensive coordinator, was do the safeties have any experience playing cover one or cover three? However, now because the Saints played amongst the most snaps in cover two in 2020, that's less of a concern. If a guy comes in and he's a little bit more adept at playing split safety, the Saints can find ways to make that work and lessen the amount of times that he's asked to be a middle of the field safety. But if you have a guy like Trey Boston, who is skill or scheme versatile, rather, he's somebody that ends up fitting pretty well within the same system in that scenario because he can play both that middle of the field safety and split safety responsibilities as well. You just might want to keep him away from the line of scrimmage, unlike what the Saints did a few years back when they signed Kurt Coleman, former Carolina Panthers free agent and safety during that season, where they did play him as sort of the third safety closer to line of scrimmage a lot. This would not be what you want to do with Trey Boston. In this instance, you would want him to come in and try to fill essentially the role that Marcus Williams played. You're not going to get the same level of range. You're not going to get him involved in the same number of plays and in the same type of recovery as what you would see from Marcus Williams. But I'll tell you what, if you end up having to lose Marcus Williams, which I think is a priority for the Saints behind possibly Jameis Winston, depending upon what Drew Brees' decision is, which we assume we'll hear within the next couple of weeks. If you end up losing Marcus Williams in that case, Trey Boston might not be that bad of a rebound for the New Orleans Saints, even if it's just for a year or two. The Saints can also take a look at the draft as well, but we know that they don't like to draft for needs. They always like to draft best player available. That'll be another series that we'll have rolling here all throughout the offseason. We'll be taking a look at spotlighting free agencies that might fit with New Orleans, but of course, we'll also be taking a look at draft picks and rookies as well. So keep it locked here on the Canal Street Chronicles YouTube page. Once again, I'm Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and sound off in the comments below. Do you think that Trey Boston would be a good fit if the Saints lost out on Marcus Williams in free agency? And of course, 
Go ahead and take a moment to check out CanalStreetChronicles.com for your daily news and notes on your New Orleans Saints.